Hey everyone, and welcome back. So we're gonna be continuing this basics of typography portion here. And the next type of category we have here for typefaces is display typefaces. Now, you may have heard that before. You may be wondering, wow, this is a typeface. Like, how do I even use something like this? Let's get into that. Now, this includes typefaces like Lobster or Abriel. Now, this category is the broadest and includes the most variation, as you can see over here. The most consistent characteristic though, is that they're generally unsuitable for, you know, body copy. And it's best we kind of, you know, keep these for things like headlines, larger text, maybe even shorter copy for a little brief. Definitely use this if you need to draw attention to something. So like this is Lobster. This is a really, really nice one. I like it a lot. And you can definitely see this being used in like a website or a marketing website or something like that. Same with something like maybe this one over here. I can see something like this. This is, a, I think this is a Briel right here. And uh, one great thing about this typeface is even though it is a serif, it definitely has that contrast that is just like very, very pronounced here. Kind of like a throwback to uh, a Didoni or modern uh, serif uh, typeface. You may look at these uh, display uh, typefaces and think, well, that's a serif or a sans serif. And in reality, you're definitely right. Like I mentioned before, they do have serifs, but technically it would still be categorized as a display typeface because you wouldn't use it as body copy. And in this example, you may be thinking, well, how do I use it? Now, this is pulled from Dribble, and this is by Elzia Arafat and they do a great job contrasting typefaces here on the web. Let's take a look over here. Now the display typeface here is very elegant and there is some extreme contrast between that thick and thin uh, line you'll notice. You could try to use this as body copy, but it would be really, really hard to read. I guarantee that. Display typefaces have their use and this is a great example of that. So you'll see over here used as a headline, like the main hero copy for this kind of landing page. And you'll see over here uh, just as a title. Now I couldn't imagine using this uh, pretty consistently to uh, typeset like all this copy, it would just be really hard to read like I mentioned before. But this is still a great example of how you could utilize that even for the web. And the last category I have is called monospace. Now you may be thinking, what is monospace? These kind of look like sans serif and you know they are variants of sans serif or serif types of fonts. Now Roboto monospace is one example of a monospace typeface. And these are fixed pitch or fixed width or non-proportional fonts. It's letters and characters each occupy, you'll notice that over here, they'll each occupy the same amount of horizontal space. Narrower characters simply get a bit more spacing around them to make up for that difference. So you'll see like a narrow character like uh, the N, but, or like a T, I don't have a T over here, but uh, these are pretty similar and you'll see they still have the same width right across horizontally. You'll notice that they all take up the same amount of space regardless of their letter. These are best used for areas where you want to evoke some sort of technical feeling. Now let's take this for example. Now this is just a simple feature within GitHub where people can collaborate over code reviews. So there's some code here and people are just chatting about it. We got some uh, reactions to that. Pretty cool. Now, monospace fonts have widely been used for coding because of the higher importance of reading the individual characters. Monospace typefaces are used for programming because they are widely believed to be better due to the common treatment of skinny letters and punctuation and alignment. You'll notice that right here in the code that they're reviewing, it's very, very easy to read. Now, if we were to compare that with something like this, when I'm trying to look at each individual letter where one letter left out could mean the difference between a uh, code that works and code that doesn't. It's very important that I have a very legible typeface or a monospace typeface, which would allow me to actually read that uh, in a much more clearer way. It's a very, very functional typeface. And like I said, mostly used by uh, like programmers and within that kind of realm. There are definitely other use cases for it. 